thank you so much for joining us for this um, Lunch and Learn. My name is Beverly Lucas, and I am the Director of Continuing and Professional Education here at the university. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to provide to you a little background to let you know what our department is all about, um, how you can take advantage of it, and so that you really understand what continuing education is. And my screen has frozen. Could you stop sharing for one second, um, David? One thing about technology, right? So what is continuing education and who are we? Um, our mission, we were established in 2009 and we provide accessible, high quality, innovative, career specific and professional development education courses for adult learners. We use our wide network, network of experts and community partners to meet the personal and professional needs of public, private, and government agencies throughout Washington, DC, and the metropolitan area. So what is continuing education? It is a term that is used to describe courses and programs for adults of all ages who seek to further their educational career or personal development. All the courses that we offer are non-credit courses. So we don't give credit. What we provide is what's called continuing education units or what's known as, as CEUs. There are different terms that people use to describe continuing education. A few of them are uh, professional education, community education. You may have heard the term lifelong learning courses or just professional studies. So let me tell you a little bit about our classes. We offer classes that are online and we offer face-to-face -face classes. Our classes are aligned with industry recognized standards with over 100 certifying bodies industries. So what does that mean? That means that our classes prepare individuals in order to take the exams with different industries. So we do not award any certifications. What we award are uh, certificates of completion. We have small class sizes so that we have personal attention and support. We have frequent class start dates. Our online courses usually start once a month. We have high qualified instructors who are leaders in their specific areas, whether it's education, industry, and in the government. And I'll talk more about that. Our classes are affordable, and we also do courses that can be customized and offered on site at any business or agency. And we have, we have done that. Let me tell you a little bit about our partners because this is very important uh, for our program. Ed2Go provides the learning management system for the format for our courses. Ed2Go is, um, works with about 600 uni colleges and universities throughout the world. Um, so our classes that we offer their ed to go, but the student uh, registers through um, the university's website. Since 2009, we've had almost 3,000 students to enroll in the classes with ed to go. Another partner is the Center for Legal Studies that provides, of course, legal coursework. In DC, there's a, a healthcare industry called Unity Healthcare. We work with them and we provide with them English as a second language classes for their staff. We work with another company called Au Pair Weekend. So all au pairs that come to the United States are required to um, get training for continuing education uh, units. So we have been um, the DC, the DC um, branch for them. They go to six different um, cities. So they come for the weekend and they get training and then they're awarded continuing education units. Right now they are working with Trinity Washington University, but we are still partnering with them. And then there's a company called Asset Management that offers asset management courses um, online. So all these partners, we have um, current um, memorandums of agreement for understanding. So the courses that are online, there's two different um, courses that we offer through Ed2Go. 
One is called fundamental courses. Those courses are from four to six weeks. And then we have what's called career training courses. Those courses are 12 to 18 months. When a student is taking a fundamental course, they can do it um, what's called self-paced or an instructor-led. A self-paced course means that all the information for the course is put out and the student can go on their own pace, although they will still have an instructor, but they are going in the pace that they want to complete the class. So that four to six week class, they could finish in two weeks if they do all the work. The instructor-led option is you work with the instructor uh, week by week, and this is all asynchronous. We offer over 100, 1,000, 1,000 courses, and these classes are available to students, staff, and faculty. Um, I wanted to show you some of the accrediting bodies that um, we prepare students for, like for the Society of Human Resources Management. You know, there's a, an exam that has to be taken in order to be certified. So we provide um, all the content and then the student actually has to go to that accrediting body in order to get the certificate. So why is this important? Why am I sharing all this information with you? We want to enhance UDC's competitiveness and we can also enhance our students' experiences. How could we do that? They could have stackable credentials. They could get several certificates. Um, this is a supplement for academic and for professional development. All these courses and certificates can complement a degree and prepare the student for the career market, and they can earn an industry certification. So what, what I did was I looked at all the colleges and I looked at the majors, and then I looked at the courses that we were offering and how could we align some of our courses with some of the majors to show students and to show staff how they can have this additional resource. So the majors that I looked at for the College of Arts and Sciences is digital media, early childhood education, special education, homeland security, and business management. Now there are others that align, but these align the best to me. And so these are all links and I, I will send you um, this presentation and you can just click on that and it'll go right to that course in ed to go Looked also at the School of Business Management and Public Administration. And these are the majors that I saw that we had courses that align with these. And then causes. Again, other majors that they had, um, and we have classes that align with these that could add to the student experience and to give them some stackable credentials. Even the School of Engineering and the School of Law. Then I looked at the community college, the same. I looked at what their majors was and aligned some courses with that major. I also looked at human resources, our HR department. I looked for courses that were not um, the same as what we could get free through um, DCHR, especially this one, customer service, and of course, stress management. What are the benefits of continuing education for the university? A collaboration with major conferences and associations from across the country. What we've done is we have decided that we were going to award continuing education units for organizations, associations that have conferences. So what we do is we, we have an application that they have to fill out. We have a rubric that we use based on what they send us. They send us the program for the conference, um, a description of what the training is, and also copies of the resumes of the individuals. And then we decide whether or not we accept them to give them continuing education um, units and they pay for those. Other benefits is for our visibility, and to highlight other programs at uh, UDC, other programs and degrees. Everywhere we go, all the presentations I make, it's continuing education, but I also let them know about uh, other programs that we have here at the university. This is a demonstration of community service by awarding continuing education units. 
And this gives us the opportunity to collaborate on projects within departments throughout UDC for faculty, students, and staff. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. Um, I work, I'm working with um, the chair of the education and of social work because we have been approached um, in both of those areas to offer for credit continuing education. So I'm work, working with those departments now to see how we can um, make that happen, especially when people are coming to us for that. Um, and then continuing education pro provides another initiative that's um, aligned with the equity imperative. And it also is a revenue generator. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do this lunch and learn is because we we're trying to get the word out about who we are, what we have to offer and how we could collaborate with other units. So the first thing we did was we met with the Dean's Council and I did this presentation similar to what you are seeing right now. Um, a presentation to the department chairs. I just gave you two examples of two chairs that I'm working with. And I'm also working with um, Dr. Chapman because she wants to do a certificate on mindfulness. So we, we, we can do that. We want to establish a social media presence that will be next. Um, of course, we wanna work with the alumni and we are gonna go out to the schools and businesses and DC and government agencies and let them know about what we're doing and to show them what we are doing. Our competition, do we have competition? Yes, we do. Um, our competition offers both credit and non-credit courses and some, you know, just a combination or one or the other. Our pricing is competitive, but most courses in continuing education from university to university, they do not mirror each other. So it's really difficult because you're not comparing apples to apples because the programs are so different. Um, the top colleges in this area that's offering continuing education is Montgomery College, Catholic University, Georgetown, and American University. This is some of our graphics um, that we are going to start putting out. And as you can see here, we have in English and in Spanish. There's some more you can see. I think I have one more. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to go to our website. Are you able to see this? No, not yet. I still see the PowerPoint screen. So just uh, stop sharing and then reshare your browser. Okay. Great, 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 great. Okay, so this is our website. It's just um, backslash, you could just put CE and continuing education. Okay, let me see. So it lists all of the courses that we have, some courses that we have highlighted. It shows here our face-to-face -face class offerings. Um, before the pandemic, we were at the community college and these were the classes that we offered face-to-face. Uh, -face. If you look here, it says we have more than 1000 classes online. If I click on that, Again, here are some classes that we have highlighted. This is the career track that I was speaking about. And you can see from creating a website to accounting to writing grant proposals. This one is very popular. But I wanted to take you in so that you could see what it looks like. These are the career training classes. It gives us the different blocks. And you can see that the array of courses from health and fitness, language, 
hospitality, writing, et cetera, et cetera. But if I click on here, it shows me the catalog of all these classes. And so I'll just go into this project management. which is on sale right now. And you enroll just like you would enroll and buy something from Amazon. It gives the overview, it gives the course syllabus, what you will learn, what the requirements are as far as what you need for your computer and all the instructional material. It, they either get an online book or an actual book are mailed to the students. And then a little blurb about the instructor and then FAQs. And this is for mostly, uh, this is the way each course is set up when a student is looking for a course. And of course, this is the search. So you can search any program. Um, billing and coding because this is very popular. And it brings up all the billing. So it says medical billing and coding voucher included. Voucher included means that the student does not have to pay for the test for the certification. This, the price is um, included. Okay, let me come out of this. Those are the career classes. I just wanna show you a little bit about the fundamental classes. I'm just gonna put in here writing. As soon as I put that in, it gives me everything having to do with writing. I'm gonna go to this grant class. You can see it's six weeks. It's only $115 and it's only instructor led. And it tells you how many hours it'll take to complete that course. Which means this, so 24 hours. So for continuing education units, it's one unit for every 10 hours. Even how to become a grant consultant. And there's one more I wanna show you. Photography, digital photography. Again, six weeks, instructor led, and you can see sometimes they have what they call suites and it's a bundle of courses. So instead of paying for this one and paying for this one, you can bundle it up and you get a reduced cost. And then there's one more, I said one more, but I thought this was interesting because someone called and asked if we had a class about how to start a business, a basket business. And I just thought that was so unusual. And I said, you know what? Let me just go on the search engine and see. And sure enough, how to start your small own business, how to operate a home-based business. So I'm showing you all these to show you the variety of what it is that we have to offer. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna do it. I'm going to go back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Can you see? 
So what can you do? How can you help us or how can we help you? We ask that you join us in a, a partnership and providing credentials for your students and staff. Just if you're faculty, just let the students know that this is something that is available to them. Um, please take the time to browse our website and to view all the array of courses. Um, you could help to facilitate a meeting or an information session to learn the more specifics about the courses. Um, I can come and do an information session. Absolutely, we'd like for you to ask questions and then help facilitate networking amongst departments. So I'm asking you, we're asking you uh, to share this information. Thank you. So now I can take any questions that you may have. Yes, and thank you so much, Ms. Lucas. I have put some information in the chat box for everyone here with her email, beverly.lucas at udc.edu, as well as the continuing education website. And if you'd like to watch this webinar as a recording or any previous webinars for this lunchtime learning series, just click on that playlist link on our YouTube channel and you'll find those as well. And are there any questions from the audience today? Or Ms. Lucas, any final thoughts before we conclude? I was hoping we'd have at least one question. <laughs> you know, that happens sometimes. I know, right, right. right? But you covered everything. So yes. that was perfect. Right? Yes. So thank you so much again. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Dean Massey, go ahead. <laughs> I, I can't stand for there to be no questions. So I have a question. <laughs> perfect. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> so Ms. Lucas, and I'm going to call her Dr. Lucas because I'm helping her claim her next uh, step in her uh, academic journey. Love it. When you think about the way the campus has embraced the continuing education opportunities that are available, what is it that you wish, if you could create a wish list of how we engaged with you around the offerings, what is it that you need us first to, to understand more than just you've done a really great job of going about the campus and making us aware but what is it that you really want us to do in terms of next step action to be engaged with your, your office, the offerings of your office and the ways that we can continue to create learning space for our students and our community partners? Well, I think that the way to do that is to, um, to go out and to speak to people directly. I know we have this information session, you get the information, um, but I need for you to do something with it. I need to be able to present to the staff. I need to be able to present to faculty. Um, they need to be able to see it. That's why I went through the walkthrough so that people can see that it's really not that complicated to get to us and that it is something that we can use not only professionally, but uh, for our own personal development. So I am available to come out to speak to students. I am available to do uh, webinars. And um, if anybody has any questions about any of the courses, I mean, I, you, all you have to do is call us and we'll, we'll, we'll try to engage with you. Does that answer your question, Dr. Massey? No, absolutely. I just think that it's an amazing set of offerings and I don't think that we are optimizing um, the, the availability of just the menu of, of, of um, sessions, but also doing the work of really tying it to our academic offerings so students could exit with um, just a, a highly competitive baccalaureate or graduate experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I did the alignment with the courses that we have with specific majors so that, you know, you don't even have to do that. I would, I would do that for you. Um, but I would love to have the opportunity to um, speak to students um, and to speak to staff because you know this is this is for everybody. Continuing education is for everybody, and you know it's so important that we all be lifelong learners. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lucas. Can we have faculty email you directly if they have that request? Absolutely, yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. And I see Dr. Carson. You have a question. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Dr. Lucas. Um, 
I mean, another really good presentation and introduction to the program that you have. It's it's impressive. Okay, so so the question I had was, what is the role I, of this continuing education program? Do you think relative to two things? One would be as you face out the community, what we might offer as land grant extension programs, because we have really curtailed the land grant extension programs that we offer uh, compared to say what's available through a number of other land grant larger land grant universities elsewhere, where they may offer, you know, 100 courses plus, um, and maybe be part of a consortium that offers thousands of land grant extension courses online nationally. Um, we don't offer that many, uh, and, 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 and certainly not covering the topics that you cover through the continuing ed program. And yet the mission for land grant extension on its surface looks like it overlaps maybe 70, 80% with what we have in our continuing education program. So how can we say that we're actually a land grant university when what we offer isn't really through the extension program with the support of the feds through USDA, but is through continuing education where we're asking people to pay for it course by course. The second thing would be when we're looking internally and we're looking at options we, we might provide vis-a-vis -vis the continuing education program, how is that differentiated say from LinkedIn learning options, where we already offer that to students, faculty, and staff at no additional cost. How is the continuing ed program differentiated from that? Now, I mean, it looks like the continuing ed program might offer some real clear advantages relative to those. But I'm just trying to see where it fits. That's all. Absolutely. You, you are absolutely right. And Andrew, uh, Dr. Carson, you and I need to have a separate um, meeting so that we can um, close that gap. Um, but our classes are different. So I know what we have, we have free classes through DCHR, we have free classes, you know, through our, through our own portal system, but not the classes that we are offering. So we have over a thousand courses, so there is a difference. And so I'm trying to use that difference to, to leverage so that we can use this, um, uh, so that we can grow both personally and professionally. Again, it's for students, but it's also for, for staff. I think that's a good answer, but it sounds like there's real advantages for this in terms of ease of use and range of topics. So I think the trick would be to find out, you know, how it positions, if you know, as you grow it out, you know, relative to the other options. That's all. Exactly. You're exactly right. I agree. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lucas. Are there any other questions before we conclude our session today? But Dr. Lucas, I do want to thank you for your time. That was a wonderful presentation. Again, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, you can also vi visit that at the UDC CAO Lunchtime Learning Series playlist right there. And any final thoughts, Dr. Lucas? Yes, I just want to thank you all again for, for being here. Um, again, I'm extending myself to you. Um, I'm only an uh, email away, and I look forward to um, working with you. Excellent. And Dr. Lucas, I look forward to collaborating with you again in the future. So thank you, everyone, so much for joining us today. We do have another PD session this Thursday uh, that will be focused on ThingLink and how it's being used to really help with project-based learning. So go ahead and look for that on our uh, website. So I'll go ahead and put the professional development sign up site in the chat box as well. And with that, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.